with our first presenter. Genesis Bedio is from Kalbayog City, Samar. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree in Linguistics and Literature and Master's in Applied Linguistics from the University of San Carlos. Immediately after college graduation, he started teaching survey of art, literature, and English courses in the, in the Department of Languages and Literature. His research interests are in stylistics of language, art criticism, semiotics, and urban art. He occasionally does studies in watercolor and ventures into digital painting. He is currently pursuing his research interest in modern still life as a vital opportunity to study object interpretation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Genesis Bedio. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. My task this morning is to, with, with my assistant on the side who will show my slide later on, is just to, to relate with you uh, the status of visual art compositional spaces with respect to expression and interpretation of the sea in art, specifically two-dimensional composition. And later on, I'm going to develop a little discussion on the ideological visual spaces to, to support the meaning of these compositional, compositional spaces and, and visual elements that are detailed in paintings of the sea. I use the phrase paintings of the sea to, to, seek, to seek out more variants of sea transformation representation instead of using seascape genera. Seascape genera is an established genre. While paintings of the sea would seem you are searching for newer transformed realities with respect to the context of our perception of uh, space in, 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 the, in the midst of the sea. So that's an appropriate title. To, to begin you or to, to, to introduce you to my work. Can I see my slides now? All right, the second slide, please. All right, here are lumped together uh, pictures of uh, paintings of the sea that I have studied. I'm showing you composi compositional spaces first before I move on to symbolic ideological spaces to, to tell you more about how they, these painters of Sibanos, how, how they created or crafted the, the visual spaces. We call it triangulation if you use triangular outline or framing with respect to the arranging of the elements or details in a painting illustrated on the right column or the right side are the superimposed triangles or triangulations grouping on, on the bottom part this is the this is to arrange the the object or human elements around a, cert, a certain area to focus the attention of the viewers on that area as a primary subject matter element and then draw up to another area as a secondary subject matter element well, basically, compositional spaces need to be managed by the the painter so that the viewing will be s stronger in terms of harmony and balance and other principles of design. My next slide, please. All right. Furthermore, apart from triangulation and groupings, Don Sequoia, for example, used L-shaped scheme, wherein he used the rock formation as a framing on the left side and the minor rock on the near center to complete the frame around the corner. It frames specifically the sea and Negros Island, topped by Mount Canlaon. On the second column, you have here Pepe Villadolid Sunset with Rainbow. He combined together triangulation and grouping. At first, we are drawn towards the left side of the composition due to the multitude of triangulation that he applied on the shallow waters. Now, this triangulation would lead us to a sort of payoff. The payoff is noticing the boat grouping uh, that is supposed to complement or to add more details and the spatial meaning to the painting of the sea. And lastly, you move up to 
the, the, the rainbow or the cloud cover, which will be discussed furthermore in the ideological representation. The rainbow is actually, uh, they call it uh, organically, principally done with respect to, to, to realism. Organically because the brightness is just sufficient to, to create realism. Then you have Romulo Gallicano's waves, triangulation, still framing is used, and the little uh, rock edges are protruding on, on the shoreline to, to create more focal interest or focal areas. And these focal areas will draw us furthermore to the violent waves, their anatomy, their impact zones, and their white, uh, white water. Those are the parts of the waves. Next slide, please. All right, this one is the l shape and grouping by Giovanni Rodriguez Lapu-Lapu Shrine in silhouette. The groupings include the cloud cover in orange, and you have the silhouette of the foliage done in broken tones. And then all of these on, the, on this side are being complemented by the cloud or by, by the minor clouds on, on the left side upper scale. Next slide, please. This time I'm going to attribute uh, visual spaces to ideological spaces, sometimes phenomenological, based on the experience of the person moving through the shoreline or moving through the sea. Next slide. This one is Dong Sikuya's Kanlaon. Now, the, the good thing about this Kanlaon is it creates meaningful contiguity between two islands, the Negros Island and the Cebu Island. It uh, has been a long tradition that uh, Negros and uh, socio-economic uh, relationships that Negros and Cebu are in contact even before the, the colonial, colonial period. And this contact had remained until today. Our, our interest in the Negros island is in, in terms of encapsulating it in, in, in a painting as if we are nearer in an islet, nearer Negros island in, in an islet in this Dong Sikuya's interpretation of the seascape with uh, with uh, Negros Island topped by Kanlaon. It's as if we're so near that there's a minor islet there uh, in the Tanyon Strait that we are viewing this spectacle and grandeur of, of Negros topped by Kanlaon. Next slide. Way of life is another meaningful structure in visual spaces, apart from its compositional requirements. We, we create more in-depth internal manifestation of our lifestyle, great indebted, uh, in embeddedness to, to the sea as a home, to the sea as our neighborhood, to the sea as our playground, specifically in Migalio's, Maxel, Maxel uh, Migalio's painting, where you have the, the, the young fishers uh, gathered around to, to, to talk about the, the catch of one of the kids. It draws nostalgia of childhood, so, so innocent and so, so free to roam around the shallow water, to, to enjoy getting fish and not being scolded. This is the kind of lifestyle or way of life that has been attributed to Maxel Migalio's Little Fishers. Next slide. This is The Little Fishers by Maxel, Maxel Migalio's. Next slide, please. Sublime mystery is more represented with movement and excessive dynamism, theatricality, in terms of the interpretation or representation of the movement of waves, for instance, and the atmospheric effect of the, the background sky in gray. Next slide. This is my example for sublime mystery. And the next slide, please. All right. Romulo Gallicano's wave. Sublime mystery is the meaning attributed to this visual. Uh, go back to the previous. All right. <clears throat> You see the, 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 the stone or the sentinel of stone being rocked or being stressed out by the powerful waves that rise up to the sky or up to the horizon line. This is the kind of, the, the kind of sublime mystery that I, I, I want to convey from my interpretation of Romulo Gallicano's 
anatomy of the wave. It's not just about the anatomy, but it's about the impact or the effect as if you are strapped on the sentinel of stones and you are being placed in the middle of action. That's the feeling that is being brought in by Romolo Gallicano. Next slide. Metaphor of hope. Another meaning attributed to the visual space, it, it had become a metaphor of hope uh, simply because we, we notice some symbolic elements like boat, the water, the streaks of light, the clouds. They, they, they look as if they contrive and, and ordain something, uh, something, something valuable to humankind, such as hope. It, it governs or it presides over the activities, even uh, destruction. You see, you see the sea in the midst of destruction. It's the image that is retained. However, in the next slide, please. Next slide. Harry Villalonga, uh, sorry, it's the, the slide with Harry Villalonga. I hope in the future, all right, a help in the future. He, he manifested here uh, an allegory or a some somehow a textual reference to Jeremiah. I guess it's Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It talks about the last phrase there of Jeremiah verse 29. At, at chapter 20 verse 11 talks about a hope in the future that despite that the Israelites are, are experiencing challenges this is the dim reality at the end of the road there is a rainbow there is hope still the the message there is being contented with the suffering because suffering can lead to uh, redemption next slide reverence to history the next slide my example Here's reverence to history as a spatiality created by Giovanni Rodriguez. It's not just a simple silhouette of Lapu-Lapu shrine with, with Lapu-Lapu surveying the sea or somehow contemplative perhaps uh, before a battle. It's about paying tribute to history, to, to myth, to narrative that we are so used to share in books and, and orally with 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 students, for instance, or in our community. The, the, the wonderful thing about this Giovanni Rodriguez Lapu Lapu Shrine is it makes Lapu Lapu a little bit of a mysterious hero, that there is something about his past that should be re, re, retold. And there are countless of narratives that could, could, could just uh, come in and developed by, 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 by anyone who has this magical imagination about, about his persona and about the, the battle that he's involved with. So the silhouette just marks off that kind of mystery and, and, and the deeper myth that we, we need to discover about the hero. Next slide. Sabano Picturex. This time, I, I need to mention Matahom, Maaniag as relevant terms to Sabano Picturesque. Very seldom. Okay, are, are we still on? My screen just blacked out. Can, can somebody advise what's happening? Uh, sir, um, your screen is working. Uh, your presentation is still there on our end. Maybe it is. Okay, can you guide me? Uh, my, my, my screen totally blacked out. I'll just talk about what's remaining. Um, Currently, the screen is showing screen. Bono Picturesque. It's so Bono Picturesque, right. Matahom and uh, Maaniag. It's something that should be studied. There's... plus uh, years of, of doing the tradition of landscape and seascape painting, but very seldom do people look into uh, viewers and scholars. Way of life is another meaningful structure in visual spaces, apart from its compositional requirements, 
we, we create more in-depth internal manifestation of our lifestyle, great indebted, uh, in embeddedness to, to the sea as a home, to the sea as our neighborhood, to the sea as our playground. Specifically in Migalio's, Maxel, Maxel uh, Migalio's painting, where you have the, the, the young fishers uh, gathered around to, to, to talk about the, the catch of one of the kids. It draws nostalgia of childhood, so, so innocent and so, so free to roam around the shallow water, to, to enjoy getting fish and not being scolded. This is the kind of lifestyle or way of life that has been attributed to Maxel Migalio's Little Fishers. Next slide. This is The Little Fishers by Max, Maxel Migalios. Next slide, please. Sublime Mystery is more represented with movement and excessive dynamism, theatricality in terms of the interpretation or representation of the movement of waves, for instance, and the atmospheric effect of the, the background sky in gray. Next slide. This is my example for Sublime Mystery. And the next slide, please. All right. Romulo Gallicano's wave. Sublime Mystery is the meaning attributed to this visual. Uh, go back to the previous. All right. <clears throat> you see the, 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 the stone or the sentinel of stone being rocked or being stressed out by the powerful waves that rise up to the sky or up to the horizon line. This is the kind of the, the kind of sublime mystery that I, I, I want to convey from my interpretation of Romulo Gallicano's anatomy of the wave. It's not just about the anatomy, but it's about the impact or the effect as if you are strapped on the sentinel of stones and you are being placed in the middle of action. That's the feeling that is being brought in by Romulo Gallicano. Next slide. Metaphor of hope. Another meaning attributed to the visual space, it, it had become a metaphor of hope uh, simply because we, we notice some symbolic elements like both the water, the streaks of light, the clouds, they, they, they look as if they contrive and, and ordain something, uh, something, something valuable to humankind such as hope. It, it governs or it presides over the activities, even uh, destruction. You see, you see the sea in the midst of destruction. It's the image that is retained. However, in the next slide, please. Next slide. Harry Villalonga. Uh, sorry, it's the, the slide with Harry Villalonga. I hope in the future, all right. A help in the future. He he manifested here uh, an allegory or a some somehow a textual reference to Jeremiah. I guess it's Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven. It talks about the, the last phrase there. Jeremiah verse twenty nine at, at chapter twenty nine verse eleven talks about a hope in the future. That despite that the Israelites are are experiencing challenges, this is the dim reality. At the end of the road. There's a rainbow. There's hope still. The, the message there is being contented with the suffering because suffering can lead to uh, redemption. Next slide. Reverence to history. The next slide, my example. Here's reverence to history as a spatiality created by Giovanni Rodriguez. It's not just a simple silhouette of Lapu-Lapu shrine with, with Lapu-Lapu surveying the sea or somehow contemplative perhaps uh, before a battle. It's about paying tribute to history, to, to myth, to narrative that we are so used to share in books and, and orally with 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 students, for instance, or in our community. The, the, the wonderful thing about this Giovanni Rodriguez Lapu Lapu Shrine is it makes Lapu Lapu a little bit of a mysterious hero. That there is something about his past that should be re, re, retold. And there are countless of narratives that could, could, could just uh, come in and developed by, 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 by anyone who has this magical imagination about, about 
his persona and about the, the battle that he is involved with. So the silhouette just marks off that kind of mystery and 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 the deeper myth that we, we need to discover about the hero. Next slide. Sabano picturesque. This time, I, I need to mention Matahom, Maaniag as relevant terms to Sabano picturesque. Very seldom. Hey, are, you, are we still on? My screen just blacked out. Can, can somebody advise what's happening? Uh, sir, um, your screen is working. Uh, your presentation is still there on our end. Maybe it is. Okay, can, can you guide me? Uh, my, 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 my screen totally blacked out. I'll just talk about what's remaining. Um, Currently, the screen is showing screen? one of picturesque. Subano picturesque, all right. Matahom and uh, Maaniag. It's something that should be studied. There's 200 years of tradition uh, of, cre I guess, 500 even, 500 plus uh, years of, of doing the tradition of landscape and seascape painting, but very seldom do people look into, uh, viewers and scholars alike, look into the type of localized picturesque that that exists in the two-dimensional composition of Cebuano artists. So that's why I, I, I use this as an opportunity to to study the, the, that aspect, to, to, to get something from our local culture, how we interpret the sea, as opposed to the heavily Western westernized uh, a standard of, of interpretation that could be limiting for someone who wants to use his local imagination to create something beauteous. Picturesque is different from other interpretations like the aesthetics of space because picturesque is more on how the individual has felt, for instance, when he moves, when he looks at a distant mountain and the land forms side by side with or in contiguity with the sea. Next slide. What's, can you describe to me the next slide? It is saying, what is picturesque? William Gilpin right. is picturesque. Uh, next slide on that, after that. Then, so, what picturesque, Maanyag and Matahom? All right, next slide. Picturesque distance. Uh, sir, right. could you try, your, um, try clicking on your laptop? Maybe the display went to sleep. My laptop just hang up so uh, i'm using the remaining time that's why i i, I opted to, to continue because uh, of the 15 minute uh, limit would you suggest an alternative it's all right so we can continue for now all right so distance or picturesque distance is one category that i have seen in most of the paintings seven paintings that i have studied the the distance embody now the, the the viewer in the painting instead of isolating the viewer or excluding the viewer from the painting. It looks as if, for instance, in Dong Sequoia, that there's an observer near that rocky formation uh, trying to marvel at Negros Island or in uh, Pepe Villadolid's uh, painting that there is someone in the shoreline trying to marvel at the texture, feathery texture of the sea, which is also echoed by the sky. It's a picturesque distance because distance is a necessary quality before anyone can even feel what the picturesque is, which is again different from the aesthetics of space. It's a kind of the, a merger of the sublime feeling, which kind of terrifying and eerie, and something that is imperfect and rustic, if you know what I mean. That's why I, I want to study this rustic, rural environment-based uh, painting, because there is something evocative in them that could tell most probably so many things, gazillions of things, about the tradition of paintings of the sea in our Cebuano context, in the art world of Cebuano. So distance is a factor. Next slide. Uh, can, you, can you tell me what's in there? 
Um, picturesque distance, feeling of groundedness, sky, sea, and land, experimentation with vantage points and locations. All right, all right. Next slide after that. The next category the is... Of being unmodified or unsullied, pristine picturesque. Or pristine picturesque is relevant in today's world. Postmodern century vandalized, for instance, environment, including shoreline or the sea. Right, here comes a painting of the sea trying to recreate the pristine before this industry had arrived, before beach tourism had reached its uh, climax. This wondrous effect of the pristine picturesque is, is the one that uh, should be should have a scholarship into because it, it will branch out with environ, in environment and in the studies in environment. Now, here comes an ideological representation of the pristine. It could represent our hungry for the past because the past in reference could be more perfect than the status of our environment today. It's the nostalgia to that pristine environment. All of the paintings of pristine picturesque done by, by Cebuano artists that I had studied, it excluded man from, from the frame and, and, and just retained this entire scene or expansive vista as if it is waiting or listening for uh, for, 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 for something, I mean, waiting, sorry, waiting for something to occur. It sits still and it is quite different from the urban activity or from even from the rural activity in the modern world. It's just the sea, the, 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 the multiple imagery that it, 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 can, it can feed your imagination and the sounds, uh, multi-sensorial experience that, can, that it can give uh, an uh, it can it can offer to an observer. Next category from pristine picturesque. Next slide, please. Yeah. What's the next category? Spiritual picturesque. Come again. Spiritual picturesque. Spiritual picturesque. Now paintings like uh, allusion to the biblical verses in a hope. Uh, sorry, in in uh, yeah, in a hope and a future equates with the spiritual picturesque. It's the, the desire for symbolism to embody the, the dogmatic uh, the principles that we, that, uh, that we want to, to, live, uh, to, to live through in, in our lives. This symbolism of the boat that is traveling is physical enough to, to be equated with our experience of suffering. Spiritual picturesque borders towards the sublime experience of pain, because after pain is satisfaction, the su the the sub the subsided experience of pain is what we are longing for. In spiritual picturesque, there's always the longing equation, and the the permission of pain to just draft through uh, whatever whatever form it it, it may it may uh, embody in, uh, in, in the physical world. Spiritual picturesque is like a journey, right? In the scene, there should be distance. That's one element that is present. And there is a destination right there in the horizon line. It could be a, a detail of a mountain or faint detail of the, faint detail of the mountain or grayish catacombs of clouds. If you notice in uh, a hope in the future, there the the uh, the destination is a little bit uh, gloomy, hinting rain, for instance. That's the kind of spiritual picturesque. Ironically, you're heading towards darkness, but uh, spirituality can be so mysterious. Spirituality involves eerie. At first, it's so close, yet when you're at the midst of your spirituality, it's quite open. Next category. The picturesque sublime. All right, in the picturesque uh, sublime, William Gilpin would not uh, would not really 
uh, would not really isolate aesthetics, picturesque, and sublime. He wanted a merger instead of the suggestion of Edmund Burke to, to isolate the sublime because it's not, again, equivalent to beauty and uh, picturesque. The good thing about William Gilpin is he traveled around the world. He traveled through landforms and observed it at a distance for so, so long an hour. <clears throat> he theorized on the, the sublime picturesque, not just in terms of visual, but in terms of the transformation of day into night, and in terms of the transformation inside him, his feelings. So he said, the painting would not be fully defined if sublime will not enter. There's a little dark forest over there that's sublime. There's a little, um, there, there's a little pathway over there that moves to, uh, to an occlusion or a blockage that is sublime. It creates eerie uncertainty feeling, irregularity. Uh, if there is a, a structure in ruins on the opposite side, William Gilpin says, even if it is destroyed, the sublime quality of that ruins will help improve the viewing experience of, of people looking at this uh, entire vast uh, landscape. If you will remove all of those elements, what remains is just spatial aesthetics, and spatial aesthetics had had been had uh, had been studied. Had, there were a lot of scholarship, or uh, yes, scholarship done on spatial aesthetics in the academic side of painting or the classical side of painting. But how about our modern world, our modern art world in in Cebuano? Um, in Cebuano culture, it seems to me that some painters, not all, Cebuano painters would still want to use the sublime or combine the sublime with wonderful imagery or beauteous uh, landscape. They, they cannot divorce yet, they cannot separate the sublime and, and theorize on another way of interpreting uh, visual details in paintings of the sea. There will always be some gray clouds, there will always be some uncertain pathway, for instance, although not all paintings will be interest, uh, painters will be interested to revisit the sublime, but still in our modern time, modern time, some painters, modernist in their, in their venture, but they still embody what the, 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 the tradition of the triad, the the aesthetics, the picturesque, and the sublime. Next up. The oblique picturesque. This is the last one that I categorized. All of the paintings are embodied in a skewed perspective. It's not always symmetrical, but some paintings that I did not include in my study are near symmetry, but still there is a an inclination towards diagonal pathway. That's why all of the, the paintings that I presented a while ago in compositional space, they, they flow within the triangulation. Uh, yes, several multitude of triangulation even in, in one painting. That's the, the essence of the last category, the oblique uh, picturesque. Because something that is irregular, according to Gilpin, even in terms of perspective, would feel picturesque for him B because of the contrast against perfection and because of the attribution to picturesque, uh, but because of the attribution of imperfection to, uh, to, to picturesque, it, it matters most. To, to Gilpin and to some other um, modern artists that their perspective is viewed on a diagonal or on an angular form, looking at the entire field differently, as if they want to discover something unique about spatiality that they haven't discovered. They, they want to, to create a space that is less 
less uh, let's say less seen to, for instance they want to see the underside of a table if the table is recognized as a table there is something about the table that has not been discovered yet that's the kind of journey that William Gilpin has passed on towards the, the modern painter and they still catch on that kind of journey they want to discover areas in paintings of the city with respect to skewed or oblique perspective so in summary paintings of the sea is of course it's a secular painting but it's a very personal phenomenological one take note that in theorizing this picturesque william gilpin used also not vic vicarious experience but his phenomenological experience while he exists in the space and somehow this informs the the method and technique of the artist who had read his work he had written about the uh, photographic scene and he he took some probably some photos to to aid in uh, in, in his understanding if if he had uh, a device but it, it the, the the thing that remains is he would not write a thing about picturesque if he hadn't feel it if he hadn't heard it so if there is a murmuring sound and and uh, sound that is terrifying it will be accounted to the imperfection of space picturesque ang iyahang Itawag. So I hope that I have contributed to your knowledge today. I will close my discussion with an encouragement to those who are interested in visual art. There are a lot of paintings that we need to study. This is just a, 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 a trailblazing uh, of the materials. I am venturing into still life because still life is also under discussed the material culture. Uh, of sociology should should be rediscussed in terms of visual art. Thank you for bearing with me. I need to restart my laptop and rejoin uh, Zoom. Okay. Okay, we'll see you in a while, Mr. Thank Genesis. Thank you so much. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. So thank you, Sir Genesis. Indeed, a picture tells us a thousand words. And at the end of the road, there is hope there. So silhouettes can mark a kind of mystery and deeper myth that we need to discover. So to get something from our culture about the sea, we have to focus on our culture rather than comparing it to Western, to Western cultures.